Hey world, I'm in Taiwan taking my day in the sun and I've been thinking about everything happening and what more about the discussion because there's nothing happening that I haven't already thought about 25 years ago. The problem is nobody wants to talk about it. So that's why I haven't talked about it. You talk about it, people get angry. So now all of a sudden they want to talk about it. Well, I've been thinking about this a long time. But I'm more interested in what people are finally saying now that they're finally interested in talking about what some of us have known. It, how do you deal with the food problem? You've got a few big companies trying to take over the food industry. We've got some people in government ordering slaughterhouses to close and throw away the food. Same thing with farms. We've got the U.S. president ordering that those farms should not throw away their food and that the slaughterhouses should stay open and, and use the food and not waste it. And in all the discussion about how to solve this problem, I've been looking more at what the Bible says about gardens and homes. When Jesus gets back and he's reigning earth for 1,000 years, the Bible says very clearly that every man will sit under his own vine. Everyone will have a vineyard. Uh, maybe not a huge, enormous vineyard to be a famous wine bottling company, but we won't need big wine bottling companies because everyone will be able to bottle their own wine. And if you think about that, that means everyone's really living with a garden. And when God made us humans, he put us in a garden. And so when Jesus gets back, everyone's not going to have their own house. Everyone's going to have their own garden. And the solution to uh, you know, the, the problem of evil people who worship Satan, whether they know it or not, the solution is to live now in what God wants us to live in when Jesus gets back. Everyone needs to start living in their own garden now. now on the subject of, of meat processing, yeah, slaughterhouses need to stay open. We should not be wasting that meat. But there's something else that happened here in Taiwan with me in my life about the same time. A friend of mine here stumbled upon a pig slaughterhouse and I went there in the dead of night because they only work in the dead of night. They don't, they're not open. They're not working during the day. They do it in secret under the cloak of darkness. It's weird. And I recorded it. I got an audio recording of it. I'm not going to say who, what, where because my, my goal is not to, to defame anybody in particular. But the pigs, there's maybe 200 of them, are squealing in fear fear because they smell the other pigs over there being chopped up across the room and they know they're going to die. And when it's their turn to go into the gas chamber, they, they really start squealing in a, in a new level of fear. And they're, they're tormented and in utter fear for a day or two before they die. And then all those fear chemicals are in the meat. Now, God told Noah all these animals are for food. We're supposed to eat them. And I'm not going to argue being vegetarian just because slaughterhouses do things the wrong way. We need to be slaughtering the animals that we raise ourselves. I mean, I, you know, every, every animal is going to live a relatively short life, except for, you know, birds and turtles. Animals live maybe, what, 10 years? Horses live 15? 
And in the wild, an animal is going to die from either disease or injury or at the jaws of a predator. And none of that is fun. Every animal that dies should die not at the jaws of another animal, but every animal that dies should die at the hands of a human who loves that animal. And we should not eat any meat where we don't know the name of the animal that we lovingly killed rather than letting it die at the jaws of another animal. Animals should not come to the end of their lives, the inevitable end of their lives, in fear for a day or two. They should come to the inevitable end of their lives at the hands of the family that they grew up with. And that's that's a, that's a hard pill to swallow because we're so out of touch with death. I've been over here in Asia seeing how factories work. I've been on the, the manufacturing floors in Vietnam. And we in the West don't know where our stuff comes from or how it's made. And it's the same thing with our food. And we need to get connected with the full supply chain we all should live in gardens and we all should have a few animals that we're raising and that are helping fertilize. We shouldn't have to have lawnmowers. We should have a sheep and a goat that does that for us because our yard is a place for them to graze. And we should not be buying stuff that was manufactured cheaply far away, not understanding where it came from. We should be making that stuff ourselves. We should not be living disconnected from the origin of the stuff that we consume, whether it's as a user purchasing goods or whether it's the food that we consume. We should be making our own food and why not making our own stuff? We all need to reestablish the connection with where our stuff comes from and all of us need to live in gardens. Everyone should have a garden. Everyone should have a house with a grapevine crawling all over it. And if we start doing this now, then these, these people that, that play their little power games trying to act like, like an enslaving pharaoh uh, of Egypt, people who play these power games worshiping Satan, whether wittingly or unwittingly, whether they know it or whether they don't know it or whether they don't want to know it, these evil people won't have power over us if we live in the life, in the garden that God called us to. It's not going to be perfect. We're not going to restore Eden. But God's plan for us was that we live in gardens. Now we've got to make them ourselves. But living in the garden really is a big part of the answer.